Good morning, everybody. Let me take you down to the river of life, rowing down the river of life. Are you ready? Over the next 18 minutes or less, I'm going to talk to you about rowing and use rowing as a vivid metaphor to reconnect us with the commonsensical, everyday things that can help us live our life to the fullest. So let me start with a story of how I got pulled into rowing. And this is the story of G3 and the smoking dragon. Now, Guy3, or G3, was a young copywriter who worked with us at Ogilvy way back in 1998. And I had just taken over as the head of Ogilvy Madras. And our chairman, Mr. Piyush Pandey, the legendary one and only Mr. Piyush Pandey, came visiting. Now, Piyush was also known as the smoking dragon. Now, the smoking dragon did not know, or perhaps he didn't care, that ours was a no smoking office. And while all of us senior folk trembled in our boots, wondering who would bell the smoking dragon, young G3 went up to Piyush and said, Mr. Pandey, this is a no smoking office. And to give the smoking dragon due credit, he put out his cigarette immediately. So after Piyush left, I went up to G3 and I said, G3, what gave you the courage to do that? And she laughed and she said, you know, Krish, once you've sat on a single skull, once you've rowed on a single skull, you will never ever be scared of anything else in your life. And that's how I discovered that rowing builds courage and character. Many years on, I also discovered that rowing builds characters. But that's another story. Not so gently down the stream. I was 44 years old when I started rowing. And I just got my second on black belt in karate. And having mastered the 50-odd fluid movements in a black belt kata, I thought that rowing would be a piece of cake. But 15 years on, I'm still perfecting my technique. And here's why. Now, this is a quad skull, which has four people on it, being rowed down the Adia Creek. The sliding seat that you see here was discovered in 1872, and that made rowing a full body sport, working every muscle from your neck down to your toes. This is James, my coach and mentor, and he's sitting a stroke on the boat. Everybody on the boat follows the stroke. And as you can see, the stroke is the first person on the boat. But given the direction in which the boat is moving, he's actually the last person on the boat. So here is a sport that puts the first person last. Here is a sport that moves backward in order to move forward. Here is a sport that requires a fantastic amount of coordination and cooperation. And here is a sport where you race with your eye, not on the finish line. And the only Olympic sport, the only Olympic sport where gold, silver, and bronze are given their medals on a podium at the same level. Thank you. Add to this the fact that drawing is one of the few sports that involves three elements, man, machine, and water, and you'll understand why the sport offers such a unique perspective and a vivid metaphor of life in its various hues and colors. So let me share with you some of the insights into life that drawing has given me. Hard through the water, slow up the slide. A good coach will have the slogan running through your head as you learn to row. Now, what he really means is when your oars are immersed in the water, that's when you need to put in the maximum effort. Once you've finished, then you move up the slide slowly, catch your breath, and get ready for the next stroke. Take a look at this. 
the quad skull gliding up the Adia Creek. And as you can see, hard through the water, slow up the slide. And I've interspersed this with some novice rowing. These guys were taught the very same thing, but in the heat of the race, they've forgotten what they've learned. And back to the quad skull, this boat is actually moving at twice the speed of the novice boat. So what do we learn? Put your effort where and when it matters most. Catch your breath when you need to. Don't rush things. Give it all you've got when you have to. The second insight, pause at the front stop. Remember the slide? When you come to your front stop, a good coach will tell you, pause for just a second. Pause for a moment in your head. Now, what this really does for you is it allows your oars to completely get immersed in the water. Also, it gives you an inch or two extra of stroke length. And as some of you gentlemen may know, one or two inches extra can make a difference in some situations. Jokes apart, I'm going to now show you a video from the Rio Olympics. This is a single skull race which was won by Mahi Drisrael. He's 37 years old, and he won this by one five hundredth, one five hundredth of a second, because he remembered to pause at the front stop. When you watch this video, I want you to watch Mahi's head, because that's where you can see the, the pause. So that's Mahi Drisrael with a cap, and as you can see, that pause at the front stop. And even while Damir Martin, the guy who came in second, was catching up with him during the last moments of the race, there was a pause at the front stop. So here's a man who won an Olympic gold medal by remembering to pause at the front stop. So what does this teach us? In life, as on board, it pays to pause for a moment, gather your strength, and focus before your next step. Live life to its fullest extent, savor the moment before, just as you would savor the moment after. Lose grip, play the piano on your oars as you row. Now, all of us know when we are asked to put in a little more effort, our grip becomes firmer but not so in rowing. If you grip your oars very hard, you can end up in the water. Take a look at this young girl sitting behind, Fasila Hussein, and watch her hands on the oars as she comes up. It's completely relaxed. A loose grip, she's playing the piano. And that's the sign of a very good oars person. And the lesson in life for us, Remember the saying, hang loose, mother goose, or stay cool? This is the equivalent of a loose grip in rowing. And just as you need to lighten your grip on the oars, you need to stay cool in a tense situation. Let me pause for a moment now and tell you the story of Kotupram Bridge on April Fool's Day. I know most of you from Chennai would know Kotupram Bridge. Most of us at the Madras Boat Club when we approach Kodupuram Bridge, we do so with some amount of apprehension because quite often people are deliberately throwing stones at us um, or casually flinging garbage over the, over the bridge at us. And occasionally and unfortunately, sometimes people jump off the bridge to take their own lives. And this happened to me uh, six years ago. I was under the bridge on a single skull when a middle-aged man jumped off the bridge and fell in the water a few feet away from me. And once I got over the initial shock, the first question I asked myself is, do I really want to save a man who wants to take his own life? And the second question, am I asking myself this because I didn't have the courage to go in there and, and save him? Because I was in a single skull and I was pretty sure that I would get pulled into the water. Fortunately for me, I looked back, and there was this 
much larger boat, a quad skull, about 100 meters away. So I raced up to them, and I said, guys, there's a man drowning in the water under the bridge. Can you please help? So they looked at me and said, come on, Krish. Today is April Fool's Day. You can't fool us. Fortunately for me, my coach was on that boat, and he heard the desperation in my voice. So he turned the boat around, and we both raced back under the bridge to find that the man had fallen on the only spot, the only spot under the bridge that had just five feet of water. And he was standing there looking completely <laughs> bewildered. <laughs> so we were able to save him that day. <laughs> but the lesson in life for me is that there's a thin line between being brave and being foolish, and we need to watch that line. And on a broader perspective, fate and destiny do play a hand, and you'll go only when it's time for you to go. Lean into the rigor. Now, essentially in rowing, there are two kinds of rowing. The sculling, where you row with two sculling blades, like the ones I brought into the, into the auditorium today or you row with one large oar. And a good coach will tell you to lean into the rigor when you're rowing, sweep rowing. Now, what this really means is to lean into the side that you're holding the oar. And what this does for you is that it gives you a better catch in the water and helps you move the boat more efficiently. Take a look at this picture. This is Hamish Bond and Eric Murray, the New Zealand pair who remained unbeaten for the last eight years. They won at London, they won at Rio, and they won every championship in between. And why? One of the reasons why is because they lean into their rigors. As you can see, it's almost as if they're on different boats. So what does this tell us? In life, as on the boat, there is a tendency to move away from a source of discomfort or pressure more often than not, leaning into the problem or situation can help deal with it more effectively to lean into or engage with a problem. Better balance against the wind. Now, those of you who run or cycle, you know that the moment you turn into the wind, life can become just a little bit more difficult, but not so in rowing. When we turn into the wind, we get the feeling of the wind beneath your wings, because the wind actually lifts our oars and gives us better balance. Here is a double skull being rowed in perfect harmony across the broken bridge, and you can almost feel the wind lift those oars and give the girls better balance on the boat. And the lesson for us, a little adversity can be good for you, and to quote Shakespeare, for like a toad, ugly and venomous, yet wears a precious jewel upon its head. So let me take you now on a visual journey of the wonderful, magical places that rowing has taken me. Can I have the click? That was an old tune called Under the Bridges of Paris with Me, which was written in 1913. But once you go past the old Adia Bridge, this is what you see. You see the beautiful whale islands, because they're shaped like whales, and you have the equally beautiful Theosophical Society. As you go further down, you see the Chetinal Palace, and then on to the point where the Adia River meets the sea to the one and only Broken Bridge, the most beautiful location in the whole of Madras. And from there, rowing took me to the World Rowing Masters in Canada in 2010, where seven of us from the Madras Boat Club competed against 3,000 athletes from 30 different countries. 
And we went in there thinking that we had a fairly good chance of winning. And our boat was really called No Big Deal. But uh, uh, by the end of the, of the three days of race, we were trying very hard not to come last in an eight-lane race. So uh, the competition was truly amazing. And the shift in perspective from saying we think we'll win to trying, very, trying hard not to come last was truly a lesson in life for us. And uh, last September, thank you <laughs> for that wake-up call. <laughs> Um, I went uh, on something called World Tour Rowing. Uh, this was on Lake Maggiore, which lies between Italy and Switzerland. And this is really like a trek, but instead of walking, you're rowing. So we rowed 30 kilometers every day for seven days along the banks of this beautiful lake. And we'd stop for lunch at a lovely little town, then again for tea at another lovely little town, and we really enjoyed ourselves. Lovely clean water, swans for company, a double rainbow, sometimes really choppy water, but always beautiful. And here are some of the really lovely little towns along the banks. Some astonishing little islands. And we made friends by the boatload with people across many, many countries. And that really brings me to my last lesson in life, which is called the bell sound. Now, when you make a perfect stroke on the boat, you can actually hear the bell ring. I'm not kidding. If you make a perfect stroke, you can hear the bell ring. And I'd like you to hear it. So did you hear the bell ring? <laughs> OK, the lesson in life for us is imagine just how different life would be if every time you did something just right, you could hear the bell ring. Truth is, when you've done something well, in your heart, you can hear the bell ring. We must accept that not every stroke can be a perfect stroke, but that shouldn't stop us from trying. Rowing anyone? <laughs> Thank you.